Hello everyone, welcome back to another great episode of Rihanna's Cuisines. Today we are making Mkate Mimina, which is an East Africa or it's an African dish. It's made with coconut cream and rice and sugar and all the good stuff. And I have an older video, but kind of wanted to do a newer video so I can show you everything in um a little bit more descriptive and a little bit more um, give you ideas exactly of how it is because Sumaya is doing such an amazing job of videotaping us. I thought let's do this again. So we are going to be doing these. Look at how soft this is. Look at how soft this is. So if you want to learn how to do this, let's go ahead review all the ingredients. But before we do that, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you have, I honestly Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notification every time a new upload, a new video has been uploaded. So let's get started. All right, so for the ingredients, I have here two cups of rice. Um, now I only have basmati rice at home, so that's what I'm using. Um, I um, washed it last night, I soaked it, and just soaked it overnight. I drained all the water out. And then here I have coconut cream, so make sure it's not coconut milk, but it's coconut cream, and it's a 17.8 plus ounces of coconut cream. We're also going to be doing um, nine tablespoons of sugar or three fourth cup of sugar. I have one and a half tablespoons of yeast. I have two tablespoons of milk, two tablespoons of oil, a pinch of salt, and about half a teaspoon of cardamom powder, which can be adjusted to your taste. Now, a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about while I'm adding this to my blender here. Um, I have an older video of this on YouTube. The thing that I do on there is that I actually ferment the yeast. Um, I am not going to do that this time. And the reason is because I have a very high powered um, blender. This is the Vitamix blender and it's super high powered. So what happens is um, when I heat up the coconut milk and I put my sugar and uh, yeast in there and it starts fermenting and then I put it into the rice, there's already heat, it takes heat to blend all that together. So it just turns into like a thick cream. So it doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ferment it in some cold um, um, coconut cream, uh, just not even ferment it, just mix and then I'll mix everything else in together. So what I'm going to do is from the can, I'm just going to add three fourths of the coconut cream. That's how much I have left. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my milk in here. And again, everything is uh, at room temperature. I'll put the oil into the um, blender. Okay. I also add a little bit of like maybe a tablespoon or two that will go into the um, three fourth uh, of the coconut cream that we have here. This is just so that everything gets mixed in really, really well. And I don't want to blend the yeast. So that's the reason I'm going to add the yeast in there. I'm going to mix everything really, really well. And I'm going to keep it aside until we are finished blending our um, mixture here. Just make sure that everything is really combined really, really well. I'm also going to add my cardamom powder in here. And now let's go ahead and blend everything together. And I did forget we're going to do just a pinch of salt. I like the, the, the sugar and salt. Just it enhances the flavor. So now let's go ahead and blend this up. The blender that I'm using is the Accent series of the Vitamix 2500. Um, I'll put a link in the description box below if you like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blend this really slowly, not on high mode because I don't want it to become cream. If you see here, I have a Ras Malai mixture going here because I'm actually shooting a video for Ras Malai. So if you haven't watched this video, do it because it's instant Ras Malai and um, it's super delicious and this one is sugar free. Okay, so I had this going on um, not very high powered, okay? What you want to do is you want to stick your finger in here. Let me put this down so that we can get this. Again, just put your finger in here and then um, feel it. If you find that when you rub it, it's got some um, 
um, little pieces of rice. I don't know if you can see that, but see how there's, you, I've got like pieces of rice. See that? There's still pieces of rice. Then your makatis are going to become hard very quickly, like the next day. So that's why you want to blend this until it's got, an, it doesn't have any particles in it. Uh, rice particles in it and it's a nice smooth texture so I'm gonna blend it for another couple of minutes all right now let's take this down here so you can see again we are going to feel it and it's much better I can hardly see I don't know if you can see but I can hardly feel there is very very little but I can hardly uh, feel any so now what I'm going to do is the mixture is really nice and warm at this point because like I told you when this uh, blends together it omits heat so it's hot what I am going to do is I'm just going to mix it for like maybe maybe 10 seconds i just want everything like the milk and the yeast and everything to incorporate really well with this and then i'm just gonna leave it in this until it doubles in size so now let me just quickly because i know i'm gonna have a lot of questions about the consistency of this so this is a nice smooth runny consistency you can okay so do you see how it has doubled in size it's raised really really nicely so at this point what i'm going to do is i'm just going to give it a little bit of a mix now you just don't want to completely deflate everything but just enough to mix and make sure everything's okay all right and see how those bubbles are forming in there this is perfect i'm going to add about two tablespoons of oil not much you just don't need too much we're gonna we'll wait for the um, uh, pan to kind of heat up a little bit um, so you want to put your temperature over at medium high and once you feel like it's um, come to that temperature I can see a little bit here so at this time I'm going to go ahead and add all you see that sound that's perfect add all that in here and I'm gonna get my spatula get everything out and I'm gonna cook this mixture and I'm gonna show you each and every step okay my oven right now is preheating on broil which is high broil um, also make sure you uh, take your rack and put it all the way on top of the oven um, all right, so there we go. Now, I mean, we're just gonna leave it alone. I'm just gonna not touch it, not do anything. What is now going to happen is you're gonna see how, Samaya, can you do a close-up? Do you see how you see these bubbles on here? That's an amazing sign that this makate is gonna turn out amazing. The other thing we are waiting for and watching for is you're gonna see the sides brown uh, see the edges will brown up a little bit so we know that the bottom has gotten really nice and brown and then the edges will also dry up just a little bit all right so do you see how it's um, so I need to zoom in completely do you see how the edges I don't know if you can see but the edges look dark brown if you look at the edges right in the corners over there just want to make sure that you guys can see that Right, right there all right so you see that here it's completely dark brown inside you don't want to touch it you don't want to be putting anything in there to see you this is the way you're going to be able to tell you can also tell that the edges have started to dry up a little bit which is perfect so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my stove off and I'm going to have Sumaya follow me into the oven here um, I have it on broil high and we're going to transfer it into the oven now when you transfer this into the oven, oven, you have to make super careful that you're not gonna be moving it around too much, okay? That's just telling me that my oven door is open. So very, very slowly, you don't wanna shift this. And we're just gonna put it in there, just like so, okay? So it's all the way. Now, you can see that my rack could have gone one up more, but then it would be touching the broiler. So my, depending how your oven is, you just wanna make sure that your um, uh, frying pan can go all the way in. You also are not going to close 
the um, oven door at this point. You're gonna keep it open, or if you can, if you want, you can just, you know, put it just like that. All right, I want you to take a look at this here. This is done. All right, I want you to take a look at this. It doesn't have a smooth finish, and I'll tell you why. After I moved, I have a different oven. Um, so when I told you don't close your door because um, you wanna keep that so it uh, broils slowly uh, because more of the heat is gonna come out, my oven actually shut down. So I basically have an automatic feature that I didn't know of, so I quickly had to um, you know, shut the door and so this is the reason why this happened. But so if you don't have that feature at home where um, you can keep the door open and your oven is still going to be on, that's the best way to do it. But the next time I would do it, I have to make sure that I do close the oven, but stand right there because this is going to brown really, really quickly. I am super disappointed about the top, but it is what it is. Um, so just in a way, it's good that it happened. So you can tell that you can also make sure that this doesn't happen by um, adjusting your oven door. All right, let's go ahead and cut it right in the middle because I remember when I used to learn how to make this, um, my mom or my mother-in-law would always tell me to cut it right in the middle because that way you, if the middle is not cooked, then uh, cut is not proper. Okay, all the way in. And this is beautiful. At this point, I am going to go ahead and um, cut all the pieces up also, I wanted to mention that if you don't like your bottom too dark, then um, don't make it too dark. For me, I love that dark, um, so does my mother-in-law, so this is how um, I love it. But it's all up to you when you're making it at home, you're making it for yourself and your family, so you can just adjust it and uh, I'll do a taste test for you. Look at the pieces here. So if your fry pan is gonna be a little smaller, you're gonna have big pieces like this. If your fry pan is much more uh, spread out, then you're gonna have thin pieces. But I want Sumaya to zoom into these. This is perfect. This is really, really good the way it has come out, but it would have been better if we could have achieved that oven door dilemma, okay? So take a look, take a look, take a look at this. Take, take a look at how soft that is. See that? Okay, now if I cut into it, see how? Oh, look at this. It's all cooked. It's all, it's just really, really wonderful. So at this point, I am going to do a taste test, but I, uh, I really like the edges. So I don't eat much of this because again, diabetics, sugar and rice is detrimental. So if I'm doing a little taste test right now, it means I gotta go out for a walk. So give it a taste test with my uh, masala chai. Oh, I can't wait. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Sugar, perfect. The crust on this, mm, so good. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Rahana's Cuisines. Hope you can join me here next time with another great video. See you then, friends. Everyone, stay safe.